What did draw a particular interest from you on armyrecognition.com these last days? Well, here are three topics. The Brazilian army has finalized the upgrade of its fleet of M113 armored personnel carriers. Taiwan launches the development of a local land-based air defense system. And the Swedish army receives its 100th CV-90 combat vehicle. Brazil started a modernization program of its fleet of 386 M113s in July 2010. BAE Systems was awarded a $40 million contract in December 2011 to upgrade 150 vehicles. A follow-on deal was signed in July 2015, worth $55 million to upgrade a further 236 M113s, bringing the total to 386. Under the contract, the vehicle hulls hatches and ramps have been reused, while all other components, including the engine, transmission and cooling system, have been replaced or upgraded. The new components are a new Detroit diesel 6V53T engine developing 265 horsepower, an Allison TX101A cross-drive transmission, Harris Falcon 3 radios and a Thales SOTAS intercom. The Taiwanese armed forces would like to develop a short-range air defense similar to the American-made Phalanx Closing Weapon Systems, or CIWS. Taiwan has requested the Chongshan Institute of Science and Technology to study development of such a land-based system. The institute has already integrated the CIWS on a truck trailer that was previously mounted on the Taiwanese Navy's Yangtze class warship. It usually had outfitted the Air Force's Songshan radar station with a CIWS that had originally been mounted on a decommissioned Navy ship. So transferring the weapon system onto a trailer would not be a problem. In fact, the Taiwanese armed forces have requested a new air defense system that could be linked to the Sky Guard. The Erlikon Skyguard 1 used 35mm anti-aircraft Erlikon twin guns that can be coupled to two surface air missile launchers, be it Sparrow, Aspide, SHV IR or IDATS. The 35mm anti-aircraft twin gun is the weapon that is used for short-range air defense against fighters, bombers and helicopters. On the 27th of August, the Swedish Army received its 100th Combat Vehicle 90 in Swedish Stridfordon CV-90. It's a family of Swedish tracked combat vehicles designed by Sweden's Defense Material Administration, Haglunds and Bofors during the mid-1980s and early 1990s. It entered service in Sweden in the mid-90s. The CV-90 platform design has continuously evolved in steps from Mark Zero to current Mark IV, with advances in technology and in response to changing battlefield requirements. The Swedish version of the main infantry fighting vehicle is fitted with a turret from Bofors, armed with a 40mm Bofors automatic gun. Export versions are fitted with Haglund's E-series turrets and with either a 30mm or a 35mm Bushmarter autocannon. Developed specifically for the Nordic sub-Arctic climates, the vehicle has very good mobility in snow and wetlands while carrying and supporting six to eight fully equipped soldiers. Other variants include forward observation, command and control, anti-aircraft, armored recovery vehicle, electronic warfare, and so forth. Three topics have retained a particular attention from our visitors on NavyRecognition.com these last days. The Russian Navy plans new test launches of the hypersonic Zircon missile from the Admiral Gorshkov frigates. The Norfolk Naval Shipyard and Dr. USS George A.W. Bush aircraft carrier. And the new Type 218 SJ submarine Invincible, built for the Singapore Navy, started factory sea trials. Norfolk Naval Shipyard and Dr. USS George A.W. Bush registered CVN-77. On time, on the 29th of August, it was a key milestone in the carrier's dry docking planned incremental availability. USS George Bush has been on blocks the past 18 months, undergoing the most extensive maintenance period in the carrier's history and one of the shipyard's most complex work ever. This dry docking period marked the first time USS George Bush had not been waterborne since 2006.
According to pictures released on the internet, the first advanced diesel-electric submarine of the German Project 218 SG, built for the Singapore Navy, has started factory sea trials. This ship is the first in a series of four units being built in Kiel by the Kielowerf shipyard of the ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems and is due to be handed over to the Singapore Navy in 2021. The launch of the Advanced Diesel Electric Submarine represents a significant milestone in the ongoing submarine program for the Republic of Singapore. The Type 200 SG will be fitted with a more advanced air independent propulsion system based on fuel cell technology, which allows it to stay submerged for about 50% longer than the Archer class submarines. It can travel at a surface speed of more than 10 knots and a submerged speed of more than 15 knots. It has got eight torpedo tubes and is manned by a crew of 28. According to the Russian press agency, TASS, a new test launch of the Tsirkin hypersonic missile will be held by the Admiral Gorshkov frigate this September month. A salvo fire is planned. The Admiral Gorshkov fired for the first time this year a Tsirkin missile in the Barents Sea. The hypersonic missile flew over 500 km and hit a coastal target. In July 2020, the Defence Ministry said Turkin trials were on schedule. The launches confirmed range and precision characteristics and the hypersonic speed. Admiral Gorshkov, with 16 or 24 missiles, is the newest class of frigates being built for the Russian Navy by the Severnaya shipyard in St. Petersburg. Finding usable videos to illustrate the topics that drew the most interest from our visitors on airrecognition.com is sometimes really difficult. Anyway, here is a relevant selection among your preferences. Boeing delivers the first MH-47G Block II Chinook helicopter to the US Special Forces. Shebel and Nordic Unman carried out the world's first full-scale offshore UAV flight with the Kamkopter S-100. And Su-34 bombers will redeploy at the reconstructed Voronezh Air Base. Delivering new technologies and performance improvement to the US Special Operations Command with the Block II of its Chinook helicopter. Indeed, Boeing has recently delivered the first MH-47G Block II Chinook to the US SOCOM. The MH-47G is a special operations variant of the Chinook. This remarkable transport helicopter has been in service with the U.S. Army Special Operations Aviation Command since September 2014. It's heavily armed with two 7.62mm electrically operated miniguns and two 7.62mm M240 machine guns. Chibel, together with partner Nordic Unmanned, successfully demonstrated the Norwegian energy company Equinor the cargo delivery capability of its famous UAV, Campcopter S100, to offshore platform Troll A. This is the world's first in terms of full-scale offshore UAV delivery from shore to an active oil and gas installation. The Campcopter S100 successfully carried out the long-range delivery flight from Mongstadt, where the spare parts were 3D printed, to the offshore platform Troll A, located in the North Sea. The unmanned delivery distance was 100 kilometers, or 55 nautical miles. The flight trials also included a successful search and rescue mission, where a man overboard, Dumi, was quickly located by the UAV, transmitting the positioning data and live images using the L3 Harris webcam real-time electro-optical infrared camera and an automatic identification system. In October, an air regiment of Sukhoi Su-34 frontline bombers will redeploy to Baltimore airfield in Voronezh. The air bay has been radically upgraded. It was pulled down and built anew. It now has the necessary infrastructure, aircraft shelters and weapon dumps. Su-34 can operate in the Russian West from there and reinforce the troops in Crimea, the Caucasus and the Black Sea Fleet. So the 47 combined air regiment equipped with Su-34 bombers will redeploy to Voronezh from Buturnikova airfield. The unit was previously based in Voronezh but withdrawn several years ago. Two training squadrons will return together with the 47 regiment. The air base reconstruction is to be completed in 2023-2024.
Well, keep in mind that Defense Web TV has more than 1,500 videos on its YouTube channel, so please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be informed of the latest defense and security news.